Through her actions and writing, Susan B. Anthony took a stand in the issue of suffrage, which started women's rights and eventually resulted in the 19th Amendment. Susan B. Anthony was born on a farm near Adams, Massachusetts on February 15, 1820. Susan B. Anthony was the second of six children. Both her father and mother were Quakers, and early in her life, she developed a sense of justice. Susan B. Anthony was homeschooled for most of her childhood, where she received the bulk of her education. Before she was 16, Susan B. Anthony started to teach. However, she began to feel that her own education had not been enough. Her father, who as a Quaker encouraged education in his daughters, enrolled her in Deborah Molson's Female Seminary, a Quaker boarding school in Philadelphia in 1837. Family was financially ruined during the Panic of 1837. Their losses were so great that they were forced to sell everything, even their most personal belongings. In 1839, the family moved to Hardscrabble, New York. That same year, Anthony left home to teach and to help pay off her father's debts. They moved once again in 1845, this time to a small farm in Gates, New York. Susan B. Anthony joined the Daughters of Temperance in 1848. A few years later, she was not allowed to speak at a temperance rally in Albany because she was a woman. She left the society and shortly thereafter formed the Women's New York State Temperance Society. Susan B. Anthony traveled to New York for an anti-slavery convention where she talked with other abolitionists such as Amelia Bloomer and George Thompson. There, she met with Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Around the same year, she incorporated women's rights into three movements, temperance, labor, and education. She showed her organization skills by helping out Whole World's Temperance Convention in New York City. She also helped a group from New York draft a code outlining fair wages for working women in the city. At a New York teaching association, she fought for the right of women to be allowed to participate in discussions open only to men. In 1854, Susan B. Anthony begins petitioning for women's suffrage and for married women's property rights. She went door to door getting different women's signatures that she could present to the legislature. However, she did not look out at the Capitol or Smithsonian in Washington. They both refused her permission to speak. This causes her to start the New York State Campaign for Women's Suffrage in Mayville, as she traveled and spoke alone. From 1856 until the Civil War, she was the principal New York agent for the American Anti-Slavery Society. She was constantly speaking to the public, even to violent crowds. When the Civil War broke out, Susan B. Anthony organized the Women's Loyal National League, which organized petition drives for freedom of slaves. In 1857, at a New York State Convention, she calls for education for women and African Americans. After the Civil War, many conflicts occurred with former Reform allies because they wanted to focus on the new winning rights for newly emancipated African American men. This led to the 14th and 15th Amendments to the Constitution. Susan B. Anthony was infuriated by these two amendments in particular because they included the word male. With the use of the word male, she believed that this would be even harder for women to obtain the right to vote. In 1863, Susan B. Anthony organized a Women's National Loyal League to petition for the 13th Amendment outlawing slavery. She campaigned for full citizenship for women and for the ability of other races to be able to vote. Susan B. Anthony was utterly disappointed when she found out women were excluded but yet she still continued to fight for equal rights for women and all American citizens. Around the year of 1868, Susan B. Anthony started to create a newspaper on women's rights. The newspaper was called Revolution and it originated in New York City. The newspaper mainly talked about women's suffrage, equal pay for equal work, women's education, and divorce laws. In 1869, she created an organization that would focus on securing a federal woman suffrage amendment. This organization was called National Women's Suffrage Association. Susan B. Anthony continues to travel across the country speaking tirelessly to promote women's rights and women's suffrage. 1872 hit and Susan B. Anthony ended up going to jail. She registered to vote in Rochester, New York and then proceeded to vote in the presidential election. This caused her to get arrested. At the trial, the judge did not even pull the jury before pronouncing her guilty. She was given a $100 fine, which with her bold and fearless attitude, she never even paid. 
As Anthony was writing the massive history of women's suffrage in the late 1870s, she realized and said, I do not consider this the most pleasant task I have ever faced. I would rather make history than write it. Although she faced struggles writing it, it ended up being six volumes long. During 1888, Susan B. Anthony founded the International Council of Women, hoping to expand the scope from a national to a worldwide concern for women's rights. She acted as the U.S. head of delegation, which occurred in both London and Berlin. In her tireless commitment to women's education, she finally secured enough funds needed to allow for the University of Rochester, New York, to reinforce women's education. Anthony attended a women's suffrage convention in Baltimore on February 1906. During that course of that trip, she stated her belief that failure is impossible. She died shortly thereafter of heart failure at her home in Rochester on March of 1906. Although Susan B. Anthony passed away, the rights that she fought for when she was living certainly paid off. In 1920, the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, also known as the Susan B. Anthony Amendment, grants the right to vote to all women over 21. I declare to you that woman must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself, and there I take my stand. I think that the girl who is able to earn her own living and pay her own way should be as happy as anybody on earth. The sense of independence and security is very sweet. It was we, the people, not we, the white male citizens, nor yet we, the male citizens, but we, the whole people, who formed the union. I distrust those people who know so well what God wants them to do, because I notice it always coincides with their own desires. She thought people were equal, and she worked for that throughout her life. She never gave up. Susan met with every president from Andrew Johnson through Teddy Roosevelt. She met with Roosevelt just a few weeks before she died. At each meeting, she begged for an amendment to give women the right to vote. She worked for more than 60 years to get the rights that women deserved. Her persistence definitely paid off. Her leadership and legacy is shown in every aspect of the rights that we have today. Through her roles as an educational reformer, women's campaign leader, and labor activist, she was able to change society's outlook on the role of women forever.